Hey, what's up everyone? We are Miles Poloso. My name is Briggs. This is my dad, Brett, and we're bringing you guys another one of our Peloso repair videos. And if you aren't following us yet, please hit that subscribe button. Always helps us out. Today we're going to be focusing on the Comfortville HB22 SS model, actually, so a little bit of tidbits. And today's topic is going to be the brains of the whole pedal stove, the control board. Dad, you got anything else? It is. Stick with us here. You know, I think, you, you know, down the line, I'll get right to it. Like, share, subscribe, because down the line, Briggs and I are going to be bringing more brands, more models that you and your family and your friends may have so we can help you all save some money. So anyway, today, with further ado, here we go. The brains, the control board, and this HP22 Comfort Built right here. Briggs is going to show you how to take this one in or take it out and put the new one in. And you'll need a few little things to help you along the way. And we're going to put it together. You ready? Yeah, definitely. All right. <laughs> let's do it. All right. Let's go. And yowza! Brett's back from the pellet stove train. And I tell you what, this is the safety thing. Unplug and plug and plug your stove prior to doing any maintenance on your stove. And if you feel uncomfortable and you live in Lynn, Lane, Benton County, call Briggs and I. We will provide the service. If you live in another state, great. Call your local service provider. So remember, unplug this puppy. These are the tools that you'll need today. A Phillips screwdriver. That's it. I'll set that aside. And if, if you look at some of our past videos, you will see that we did a video on the back power switch. Now, if your power switch is good, the fuse is good, most likely, this control board needs to be changed out. So, you will need a new control board. And if you need this, you can go to our website, milespellstove.com. You get it. You order one up. This is what it looks like. Briggs will get into more detail on that. There are a few wires on that control board. So, I would recommend use your cell phone, take a picture of the wiring so you, you have it. And if you're old school like me, a pen and a piece of paper, write down exactly where these wires came out of the control board. It'll help you. I know you can do it. Take your time. You're going to save some money. Briggs, you ready to go to the next scene? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Follow along. Let's do it. All right, everyone. So when replacing the control board on a comfort build stove, we're going to take it slowly, step by step. And the reason being is because this is a process you really don't want to rush because if you rush it, forget to plug in a wire or start crossing, your stove ain't gonna work quite right. So we wanna make it as smooth as possible. So with that in mind, let's go to the stove. So right away, we're gonna be focusing on the right side of the stove facing forward. We're gonna be opening up this panel as so. Right away, because of the extra space we have in here, you're gonna see what we're gonna be tackling today. So enough lights. I'm going to be taking this control board off the bracket that's mounted on the control board itself and the floor to stove. The bolts or screws that are holding them are the Phillips. Now you can either use manual or the electric, whichever you like. Um, I plan to be using both just depending on what I'm tackling here. So right here, I'm gonna be tackling these guys with the impact and slowly taking them out. Making sure I stay organized, keep the screws over there, perfect. So now, these next two screws are a lot easier to access, and we're gonna be taking those out. So we're gonna be going for the bottom one, taking that out, and make sure it doesn't run away too far. And then finally, we're gonna be going for this guy. Again, not lose the screw. Put that to the side. You can take this bracket, put it back there if you like. And then right here, we have a little bit more maneuverability for our stove. So, comparing the old one on there with the new, you can kind of see our game plan. So the next step of what we're gonna do, I'm gonna start taking these screws off from the old one. Going over here, again, there are Four screws total, one in each corner. Again, right here, there is no rush on this. And we're dealing with some plastics too, so just be careful 
you don't apply extra force in places where you don't need or you're going to start breaking the casing. One more as per se. Sometimes these wires can get in the way. So just be a little nimble and careful. Right here, I got all screws out. Put my tool to the side and right here, take the plate off, set that to the side. And right here, this is what we're gonna be going for. All right, so now we're gonna be focusing on the bread and butter. There's gonna be seven connections here. You're gonna have your main power line connection and two through six all right here for all the miscellaneous other ones. So before we get started, let's get a checkpoint. You're gonna phone in, get a nice photo or two. Perfect. Just in case if you make a mistake or you lost your place, it's always nice to have that reference point. Ahead of time, I have our new control board here. I did the same method previously shown in the last scene of taking the faceplate off. So here we have another reference point and where we're gonna go. I'm gonna put this to the side right back here first. I'm gonna make my first disconnection. So right here, this one's kind of a hard one to forget where it goes. It's the biggest one. There's only one place where it can go. So this one, almost a no brainer. I'm gonna set that to the side and right here instantly, we have all this room to work with. Perfect. So we're gonna fo be focusing on the next connection. So there's a multitude of methods to do this, but one that's worked personally for me is this one I'm gonna show. So right here, I'm gonna start from this one and then gonna be going down. So right here, what you can do, you can slowly pull off that connection right there. There's a little wiggle and they'll pop right off. And then we will thread this through and we will go one at a time. This way, it is not, it is a lot more streamlined to not lose your spot. And you just do a whole matching game right here. So right here, first hole, you'll have two wires going through, technically three, but you'll have two connections going through. So right here, as you can see, these two top white ones, we know they're blank, and we'll make another distinction. The black wire going through there is going right for the only yellow connection. So that's a good memory right there. Pull that out. This is probably one of the more tighter ones to deal with. And might take just a little wiggling, but once you got it through, it is out. We're gonna go through here and match that. Just going slow. Now the reason why, another good reason why we do this one at a time is because, well, if you take them all out, easy to lose your place. And then also, while well, I've seen it, people don't thread it through these holes. So they connect it all through up there in the top parts. And then they realize, well, I got to put the faceplate on and well, well, you get to do another run through. So let's go for the next one. This is the third wire. Checking our progress, two white down, one yellow. We're gonna pull this out. It's going to the first circular hole there on the top. And doing well. Go over here, doing the same method. Funnel that through, perfect. As so, you can pull it out just a little bit more if need be, because you can always tuck it back through. Connect it right as so. Boom, connected. You know, Briggs, I like this method, you know, on this comfort belt, you have a lot of room to work with. So you can take your time, folks, because if you just do it, you're gonna be successful. And like Fred always says, save some money exactly and right there our fourth connection going through second circular hole funnel through and you saw earlier that it went right to red and we will put it right to red and don't worry where all the wires are kind of the extra ones are kind of hanging you can you could figure that out a little bit later once they're all connected and you can kind of make it a little bit more nicer so right here, we are almost done. We only got two more left. So third circular hole, only one wire in there, going to the black connection, funnel it out, and keep doing this switch method. 
The more you do it, the more and more your job is complete. And so there's, you can also folks, if you want to, as you can see, there's four screws back here. Some people may take the whole board out of the casing and then you'll have more room to work with, but you'll have more screws and you gotta make sure you kinda keep things, everything in line. So you can do that method. This one I kinda like, it's more a little simple in the fact that I have less screws to deal with. And then when I try to actually put stuff back in, I'm not running the risk of, well, there's more stuff to do and more messing around with the control board, especially the actual board part itself. And I don't, I want to run less of a risk of unscrewing these because when you're tightening these back down, if you over tighten this, you crack this board, it's, that's not good. And <laughs> definitely not good right there. So doing the last connection right here, four circular hole, we're gonna pull that out. And it was the blue connection. Going through again, old bore's free. I'm gonna set that out of the way. I'm going to make my final and last connection right on the blue. Funnel that through, make the connection, and there you go. Most of the connections that were the confused part, they're all connected. Don't have to worry. You can push in or push out any excess wires you need, and you're good right there. And finally, don't forget, put in your main Wallux connector. Now your board is fully put together. Now basically, all you really got to do is replace the plate on here, good to go as so, and this one's pretty straightforward. We're just going to be going around, taking the screws, and slowly putting them in. Now this is the part, definitely don't want to rush, because if you go too fast on here, you're going to start splitting the plastic. Again, not a fun time. There we go. Perfect. And sometimes with these plastics and everything else in manufacturing, sometimes not everything is perfect. But as long as you can still get a good cover seal on here and protect all the components, you are golden. Perfect. Right then and there, board's good. Finally, we're gonna go in. We're just gonna go for the whole mile, Dad. So you're putting that bracket back on. Uh huh. Top and bottom. So right there, funnel it through. Good. If we can find the hole. <laughs> Put it in there. I know. I know. See, this is reality, folks. Uh, just there we go. You'll have things shift around. My dad's right. It's like a lot of things, simple as said, simple as put. It's like, yeah, just put the screw in the hole. But you know, you only have two hands. And sometimes when things wiggle around, you're just like, gosh dang, all I gotta do is just that. And then, well, <laughs> a job that's supposed to take you not that long. Oh, you guys know the story. 30 minute jobs, not always the 30 minute job of what they say online. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to this side. Oh, they course. can see the bracket. Yep. And so basically your board's all in. We're just gonna put the final components right here. And these are just a couple more screws as well. I'm gonna have to get this flashlight in here. That's a good view. Thank you. Bear with us folks. It's one thing to get your hands into the stove, it's another thing to try to get a camera, flashlight, and well, multiple views in here. And these two right here, simply put, they, I mean, it's easy to put a screw in, but then also just at this angle, just how this is done, usually this last one just gets to be somewhat of a bear to, to thread, just with the angle. But once you're all good, yeah, we'll do a mix of tools today. We'll hand thread that in there, good old fashioned. Perfect. So, board solid in there. So, Brett did an awful filming job here. So, what two screws did you just put in there? Because I couldn't get a good view. Just like in the earlier scene, it's these two screws right there. Okay, that's the main mounting. Yep. Okay, thank you. And right then and there, everyone. Control board's in. And, uh, well, yeah, that's it.
Hold on, there's more? Okay, bonus clip. Now, differentiate the two things is what I'll do. Now, Briggs just did the control board or the brains of this comfort belt. Now, I'm gonna zoom in on it. Now, you can see all these connections right in here. Now, yes, he took his time, and I think that it's very important that you do the same so you get good connections and you don't ruin your new control board. So this is the brains. Now I'm gonna back off, take it over here, goodbye. Here, this is the main user board. I call it the user board. So this is where you turn it on and off and this is where you basically do all the functions of the stove itself. So these rarely, rarely, rarely go out. But if some parts of your stove are working and this needs to be replaced, it's pretty easy to do. You just go along towards the back here and all there is is one connection right here. So just take that connection off and then here one, two, three screws with your Phillips and then replace this user control panel. So these aren't very expensive and good golly, the control board is under $200 with Comfort Built. And it comes with a one-year warranty and it includes the control board, which I think is really, really cool. So anyway, take your time with this, folks. And uh, we appreciate your patience with this one. It was a tough one. I did a, I, I would give myself probably a C. C plus at least. Maybe a C plus in filming, but it was really, really tight quarters there. And I did my very, very best. So thank you very much for viewing in. Hey, thanks everyone. Thank you for your patience. We really appreciate it. And we hope this video has been really handy and well. Handy? Yeah, handy and help them solve their jobs. Okay. Yeah. We'll go with handy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Dad, I got to give you more credit. You did you did better filming than you expected. All so right. We, we got to at least give you the B range. <laughs> Mainly because you still did good, but like, you know, we're still learning, everyone. We still want to get better, which is each content video we put out so yeah uh, i think other than that uh we really appreciate you guys viewing in they probably uh, cut us off already probably <laughs> yeah, at this point it's almost <laughs> like we're doing a podcast the likes the shares subscribes all that really helps us out so basically that's about it unless you've got anything else to check no out. we're growing because of you and we thank you for viewing in today and pretty soon it is going to be Harmon Stove Week. And we're going to be bringing a couple of different models for you, your family, and your friends. And again, we thank you for tuning in. All right. Thanks, guys. See you next time.